All right, guys, welcome back to Underground Science. And in this video, we're going to be talking about RH incompatibility. All right, so make sure you go and check out my um, RH factor video because it's we're just um, that's going to be useful in this video. All right, so um, this should be a quick, quick video. And uh, so let's go and get started. So RH incom incompatibility pretty much occurs. Um, uh, it's related to the fetus and the mother. All right, so during birth, right, during, so usually, usually what I should start off by saying, just a quick overview, is that usually we have, when, you know, when you uh, fertilize the egg, and then it, you know, it plants on the uterus and all that, we'll go ahead and talk about that more in the reproductive system, right, for the female reproductive system, but it implants on the uterus, and then that, um, the embryo starts to grow, right, starts to replicate, grow, 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 and then we know that it's, around um around 40 weeks is where is the gestation period right so in the beginning at when the embryo first starts to grow we we see that the mother starts to develop a placenta right and a placenta is pretty much the barrier in which the mother's blood pool or the mother's blood uh, kind of pulls in and it 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 helps for the um, nutrients to transfer from the mother's blood to the baby's blood and it helps for the baby's blood, the um, the waste that the baby develops to be transferred into the mother's blood, but they don't actually connect, right? So the blood, the mother's blood doesn't actually mix with the fetus's blood, all right? And so what happens during pregnancy, oops, sorry, what happens during pregnancy is that, or during um, birth, I should say in specific, right, is that sometimes just a little bit of blood, so during birth, during birth, what happens is that sometimes a little bit, a very little amount, all right, a little blood from the from the fetus, right, from the fetus can actually mix, right. So a little blood from the fetus, the fetus, sorry, can actually, just just a very little amount of blood can actually mix with the mother's blood. All right, so with the mother's blood, it's so, but it's such a little amount. All right, but we'll see why it's um why it could be dangerous soon. All right, so with the mother's blood. So what happens here is that so now that we know this, let's go ahead and then, um see what the basic idea of Rh incompatibility is. So Rh in incompatibility occurs in the course of two pregnancies and two births. All right, so. The first baby, let's say the first baby that uh, the woman, the mother, um, gives birth to, let's say that fetus is Rh positive. All right, so it has it has the D antigen on its cell membrane of its red blood cell for the fetus. So this is going to be for the fetus. And let's say that the mother, however, right, let's say that the mother is Rh negative. All right, so let's say the mother is Rh negative. And so this is, again, the first time around. So this is the first the first pregnancy, all right? The first pregnancy slash birth, right? And so if the mother's Rh negative, that means what? That she does not have the D antigen, so no D antigen. All right, so what happens now is that now that we know this, so let's say the first baby, right? comes in, the mother becomes pregnant, and she gives birth, and let's say a little blood from the fetus mixes in with the mother's blood. Well, here we see that the fetus, if we say the fetus is Rh positive, if the fetus's blood a little bit mixes with the mother's blood, that means that the mother, because she doesn't have the D antigen, she's going to start making antibodies against the D antigen that she received from the baby's blood, just a little bit. Right, so she's gonna start making antibodies now. All right, so now the mother will actually start making antibodies against the D antigen, against D antigen. All right, so against the D antigen. So, so now the mother has made antibodies against the D antigen. Okay, so now let's say that the mother gets pregnant again, right, with the second baby. So with the second fetus, so let's see what happens now. Now, during the second pregnancy, is all we have to take into consideration is that 
And even before we say that, let's t um, uh, say something important is that antibodies, especially immunoglobulin G antibodies, all right, which are produced by your uh, B lymphocytes, right, your plasma cells, your effector cells, and also your memory B cells also that produce a bunch of memory antibodies. That can So these IgG antibodies can then cross the placenta, all right, of the mother to the fetus. So it can help the fetus in his or her immunity, right? So can cross the placenta. So let's go and write that down. Can cross the placenta and then go into the fetus, right? Into the blood of the fetus. Well, now what happens now, right, is that we remember we made antibodies now. So what this, what is going to happen is that during the second pregnancy, if the fetus, right, so if the fetus turns out to be Rh positive again, the second fetus, right, in the second pregnancy, this is where Rh incompatibility comes into play because now, previously, the mother's already had the D antigen antibodies against the Rh positive blood type, right, or, or it's the D antigen blood type in, in particular. So what's going to happen now is that if the second time around the fetus is Rh positive, the antibodies for the Rh positive antigen, which is the D antigen, can then cross the placenta. So these antibodies can then cross the placenta and enter the fetus's blood, where then dangerous things can start to happen, like these antibodies can start agglutinating the fetus's blood, right? Because the fetus has that D antigen on it, and we're sending D antigen antibodies to the fetus. So that's RH incompat incompatibility. All right, so let's go and write that out. So this is called RH incompatibility. All right, so when the mother first time around makes antibodies because maybe during birth just a little bit of um, blood from the fetus aside crosses the placenta into the mother, just a little bit, right? Just enough to make uh, antibodies against the, that D antigen. Now, the next time around, if the fetus is Rh positive again, and then what that's going to do is that the antibodies can cross the placenta and enter the fetus's blood, right? And so if the antibodies enter the fetus's blood, these antibodies in specific, right, in particular, are for the D antigen antibodies. So these D antigen antibodies are then going to start agglutinating the fetus's blood or can start to agglutinate the fetus's blood because the fetus's blood red blood cells have the D antigen on it all right so that's that's called RH incompatibility so um, that's all I want to get through in this video um, I hope this video made sense to you guys um, I hope to see you guys tune into my future videos we'll talk about more cool topics about bio biochem physics and chem make sure to hit that notification bell like and subscribe See you guys later and stay safe.